Hey there. So there's something going on with my honeybees, and I don't know what yet. Um, yesterday, I was mowing the lawn, and it was sunny and beautiful, and the bees were outside of the hive like this, but it was probably like a quarter of the size of bee pod or bee pile that there is right now. And um, I didn't really think of anything of it because sometimes when it's nice and sunny, they like to just um, hang out and fly around the hive. And um, now it's, it's the next day. It's about 6 p.m. in the evening. It's pouring rain. I mean, there are some that are, that are wet on the outside here. They actually look like they're dead. Uh, and they're all just piled on outside of the hive. And I don't know what is going on. I don't want to open everything up right now because it's raining and right now I just have the one brood box because when I ordered the package bees the package was pretty small and when I dumped them in this bottom brood box they I mean they weren't even close to filling this box this layer right here is the internal lid and I'll just open this a little bit so you can just enough so you can see but not enough so that they get too wet. I mean, they are filling up the box. But that top box doesn't have any frames in it yet. So it's 6 p.m. right now. Um, this has been happening for, it's been building slowly for at least 24 hours. I'm gonna wait until tomorrow morning and tomorrow morning, if this is still happening, and if the pile of bees is even bigger, then um, I'm gonna have, to, and if it's still raining, I'm gonna have to figure out like some some way to cover this because they might have filled out that bottom brood box, um, and they might just be overcrowded right now. But I don't know. And um, this is really weird for my bees to be outside of the hive when it's raining. They are inside the hive normally. Like you can't even usually tell that there are bees in this box when it's raining because they all stay inside. So this is very, very strange. It's 10.30 p.m. now. Um, it's been raining consistently and I just came out here to check on them to see if anything's changed now that it's kind of getting darker out and nothing has changed. Oh, and they're just pathetic. I mean, I just feel bad for them. It looks like a lot of them are dead or close to dying just from the cold and they're all soaking wet. So I'm going to come back out here first thing in the morning and see what I can do for them. Good morning. It's uh, about 9 a.m. the next day and it's actually beautiful and sunny right now. Uh, I can't believe how lucky I just got because the forecast was supposed to be rain again. So this is what we're looking at. After doing some research um, and um, a friend helping me, Thanks, Randy. Um, I'm pretty sure what's happening here is that they are bearding before a swarm. And um, let me just put this disclaimer out there. I am not a professional beekeeper. Um, I've never kept bees before. This is my first year. So I'm doing my best to just try to figure out what I need to do. Um, what I think is going on right now is that they're bearding, which means they're just forming a pile outside of the hive um, for whatever reason. Sometimes it's temperature related, sometimes they're about to swarm. And um, by swarm, I mean they've decided that they are either going to leave because their hive isn't good enough for some reason, or they're gonna leave because they're doing so well as a colony, they're ready to split in half, and um, half of them are gonna leave and go live somewhere else because there are too many bees for the hive. Um, so what I'm gonna what I'm gonna try to do is um, in a few hours that direct sunlight should start filtering onto the hive, and I want to give them a little bit of time just to warm up and get more comfortable um, because I'm sure a lot of them are really still cold right now. Right now it's about 9 a.m. and it's probably like 55 degrees Fahrenheit, so I'm hoping that warms up a little bit um, within the next few hours. So. So before I start like, lifting open their hive and taking apart their house with all their, their eggs and their babies inside, I'm gonna let them warm up a little bit. 
which means it's gonna be a little scarier for me to actually go in there and like open things up because they're gonna be a lot more active in the sun, uh, which I'm not looking forward to, but something I gotta learn, right? <laughs> something I have to get over if I'm gonna be a beekeeper. So that's my plan. Um, I'm gonna give them a little bit of time to warm up. I'm assuming right now that they're starting to beard, which means they're starting to form um, a formation outside of the hive because they're getting ready to split in half and leave. I'm assuming that this main brood box is totally full and they feel like there's not enough space for them anymore, so they're trying to go elsewhere. But again, I'm not a professional beekeeper, but this is a learning process, right? So, we'll see how it goes. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon now, and the hive is getting some direct sunlight, and uh, this is pretty crazy. So, that whole, uh, what I was calling a beard of bees that was down in this corner over here has disbanded. And you can see all the bees that are out right now um, sunning themselves. This is looking really active and so much better than it was uh, yesterday evening. and earlier this morning, but I am still going to go ahead and um, add more frames. I'm just going to go inside and uh, suit up. So after I made the very first bee video, the one where I was installing the bees, meaning dumping the package of bees into the hive, um, and I just, I didn't really think anything of it, but I wore all black. I was just like piling on like black sweaters, black pants, just lots of layers. Um, a couple of you said, like, hey, you gotta watch out because bees have a natural instinct to be extra aggressive to something that's huge and all black because they think it's a bear. Like, it's, their instincts tell them it's some sort of predator. So, I'm not quite ready to cave in and like buy the whole suit yet if I can still get scrappy with things I have in my home wardrobe. So, I figure if bees don't like black, maybe they enjoy a little hot pink. And I have bees landing on me already. Getting on the gloves. I hope you can see all this all right. I literally have my smartphone uh, taped to my chest. <laughs> okay, so here I've got all the frames. I have 10 frames here. I did this. Um, the makeshift little string idea. I think it'd be nice to have at the end um, honeycomb that doesn't have plastic in the middle. So this is my one lone frame for the top box that does have like the plastic wax coated insert. But uh, I mean, these are good for if you, if you just want to extract honey at the end, but if you ever want to be able to eat the comb, I mean, you can't do much with this because you've got plastic in the middle. Pretty nervous right now. Okay. Okay. Here come the bees. Top lid. Open. There are bees everywhere. Wow, it smells like bees. This is so cool. And this box needs to come off. Oh. Ooh, all right, this. They have sealed, they've sealed that lid on. To pop that off. I've glued it on. Ooh, okay. Okay. Oh wow, bees on the bottom side too. Bees everywhere, okay. I've got it. Wow, look at that. Okay, so they don't have all the comb built out. So the comb on the left right now, or it looks like it's comb, but it's not. That is the plastic uh, liner insert. I'm looking for queen cells, which are gonna look like tiny peanuts. Okay, I'm going to keep approaching from the back because from the front, that's where a lot of them are. I mean, that's their, their bee highway, right? 
they're used to coming in and out from the front. So. If I'm staying out of their way, they won't be as irritated with me being here. They just got really mad at me being here. Alright, just did something to make them mad. Again, this is my first year, I'm not an expert. I wanted to set you over here. Oh, I know this is gonna be kind of a hard drop. Sorry, sorry. Okay. And after that, I shouldn't need to take any frames out. I should have enough wiggle room in here. Okay, so there are definitely a lot of bees in here. So I'm guessing that they do feel like there are too many bees for the amount of space that they have. I don't see any in there. Uh, well, again, I'm not positive what I am looking for, but that looks like potentially a queen cell to me right here. Well, I was thinking this would be a lot more straightforward than it is. Um, that's okay. Yeah, it kind of is hard to see what's going on with so many bees. I'm going to try to move you over. And we'll look at the next one. Take a step backwards and try not to think about all the bees that are trying to kill me right now. Uh, back to mission, finding queen cells. Wow, there's a lot of brood on here. They are building out a lot of crazy stuff over here. I'm just gonna pop them back in. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm crushing so many of you. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. I am wearing uh, leather pruning, rose pruning gloves. They are long gloves. Okay. It's awesome. Again, lots of dark colors, so those are brood cells. No queen cells. Again, I want to note that. Alright, sorry guys. Sorry. It's crazy just feeling them run into you. Like feeling little tinks coming from every part of your body. Because before they sting you, they just run into you. Um, honeybees can only sting once, actually. Some bees, like wasps, can sting you multiple times, but a honeybee only has one sting before it dies. So they don't sting you right away. First they give you a warning bump, just to be like, hey, hey, you're getting too close. I'm about to sting you. Awesome. So we're getting out of brood or um, egg and larva territory and into honey territory. Wow, I wish you guys could see how many bees are on my, my face mask right now. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, there's plenty of room left to build out on this frame. They've really only, um, so you can see on the top left where my finger is wiggling over here. You can see there are bees working on um, building out some honey cells. And then on the bottom right, that's all the plastic insert liner. So um, even though it has a kind of honeycomb pattern, that's all just plastic. It's nothing that they built. Other side looks better. Yeah. Okay. All right, last one. I'm sorry, guys. I. Wow. My frame is just empty. Empty. There's the back side. They've worked a little bit on the back side, but maybe only like a quarter of it. Okay, so I was really expecting to see like a bunch of queen cells in here. Instead of uh, making more worker bees or drone bees, they decided um, to turn them into queens because they were ready to split and swarm. And um, when they swarm, they take half of their colony along with a new queen because every colony needs a queen, right? So the first step, if you're thinking about leaving, is, all right, we need to make a new queen so that when we all leave, we've got a queen to take with us and there's a queen who can stay back. Trying to gently get them back together here. Sorry, guys. Sorry. I'm trying to get you back in your house. I will leave. And this was our brood frame. So that frame was now back inside. Okay, let's take a look at these two. This one, let's see, a lot of bees on this side. Yeah, a lot of bees on that side. They're working pretty hard on the comb. Frame is almost fully filled out on this side, but on the other side. A little more room. Suck it in. It's tight, I know. And, uh... <laughs> Look at my hair. Oh my gosh. My mom saw me right now. She would be freaking out for me. We have a handful of bees. Okay, what I'm going to try is just taking one of these blank frames that I made and I'll put that in the bottom here. Again, I'm sure that there are plenty of beekeepers who actually know what they're doing. Uh, who don't think this is a good idea, or maybe it is a good idea, I don't know. But I just figure it might be nice um, if we put some of the bees on top, just to encourage them to start coming to the top box. And we'll just give these guys, there's one of the full frames inside here, but we'll just give these guys an easy ride over. Okay. Okay, so now this top frame comes off and there's holy wow that's cool okay let's see if I can show you this they have all just clung on together you can see that Woohoo! instead of being spread out they all clung together now there's a big bee mass wobbly now we'll put in more frames. And just this frame that actually has a little bit of honey. I want to make sure to put that one more toward the middle. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to scoot this over. I'm gonna scoot this over. You can see all the bees in there. 
So this is the bottom layer of frames that we just took apart. And then I put this, uh, the top box on, and now we're filling the top box with frames. And before, this top box was here, but um, instead of it just being open, like between the top and the bottom box, I had this internal lid separating them. And the reason you have that lid right there instead of at the very top is because when you don't have as many bees, which I didn't because I had just bought them all um, in a package. So when you don't have as many bees, it's really hard for them to keep themselves warm, especially um, when you're beekeeping in Alaska. So when we put our bees in this hive, there was still snow on the ground and there was really nothing I could do to prevent that. Um, once the bees get shipped up here, you just have to roll with it and get them installed as soon as possible. If you're curious and about watching the initial installation video. I'll put a link to that in the description below on this video. You can check it out. But uh, yeah, so now we're putting the internal lid actually on the top. Um, we don't need to separate their space to give them a smaller space to keep warm. I think they can handle two. And full of bees in your home. Mm -hmm. Try to give you a ride, then you just fly away. Okay, come on. I just took out these two wood planks that I was using as an entrance reducer, uh, thinking maybe since my bee population is a lot bigger now, maybe they were just getting irritated because their entrance was a lot smaller and only one of them could fit in and out at a time. So maybe that was part of the reason they were showing some swarm tendencies. The, the three main things I did here were, one, I removed the entrance reducer, two, I moved the internal lid from the center to the top and then three I added frames in the top box so basically like I doubled the square footage in their in their home and made it so that the entrance was bigger and hopefully that works all right it's been exactly one week since I I saw what I thought was the beginning of a swarm and now everything looks good I've still got a ton of bees so I'm pretty confident that I didn't lose half of them to a swarm. And I'm gonna go in right now and just take a look at what some of those uh, empty frames that I put in a week ago now look like. It looks pretty empty initially, which is definitely to be expected. Just gonna go ahead and kind of touch each one just to loosen them apart if they did decide to start gluing them together. Wow, look at that! Oh my gosh! That's so incredible! Now keep in mind that this was just two strings before. It didn't have any uh, of that plastic comb insert on it before. And look at everything that they've built out. Wow! Same thing on the frame next to it. That's fantastic. Oh, and they're starting to fill it with honey. Wow, that's incredible. Awesome. Very cool, I love it. All right, well things are looking really, really good. They're starting to fill out those top frames, which is exactly what I wanted. I believe, anyway, that I prevented a swarm. There we go. Things are good. Mission accomplished.